Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Egg Whisperer Show. I'm Dr. Amy Avazade, your host. I'm a fertility expert here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So if you don't know what a fertility expert does, we're basically egg rescuers and fertility myth busters every day, all day long. And I hear myths in my office with patients, and I just want to share some of the ones that I hear all the time. So hopefully you can stop believing them too. So the title of the show is Nine Myths About Fertility That You Should Stop Believing. So one of the most common myths that I hear is that birth control pills have ruined my fertility. And this is the thing, birth control pills basically mask your infertility and they trick you into thinking that you're fertile because they are hormonally inducing regular menstrual cycles. So this is what I think. You know when you look at your pill pack, and in some people's pill packs, it actually says do a self-breast exam every month. Well, I think that you should be getting your fertility levels checked at least once a year if you're on birth control pills. There's a simple test that you can do. It's called the AMH test. It can't tell you you can get pregnant or you can't, but it can give you an idea as to how many eggs you have left in your egg bank, so to speak. So I think it's an important test to do, especially if you're on birth control pills for a long period of time. You don't want to find out, let's say, if you started pills at 16 and then stopped them at 32 to find out that you may have run out of eggs, let's say, three years before. So if you had been tracking your fertility levels, you would have had an opportunity to do something differently, like maybe have a baby younger or freeze your eggs. So talking to a fertility mythbuster like me will help you understand this fact that birth control pills do not harm your fertility. There's no need for birth control pill washout, and there are many non-contraceptive benefits of birth control pills. But you've heard about the bad ones, the weight gain, and of course, they can cause depression in many patients, but they do not cause infertility. So don't blame your birth control pills on your fertility issues. Get educated and find out why your periods may be irregular or absent after you stop the pill because it's most likely not the birth control pills. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is myth number two, and that is that previous paternity equals current fertility. The reason why I think this is so important is that you've heard that saying, it takes two to tango. Well, imagine an embryo. An embryo is both an egg and a sperm cell together. And so it really is important to study both the egg health and sperm health as women and the patients who see me, most of the time it's a woman in my office and sometimes they're bringing their male partner if there is one. But if you think about it, it's really important to look at preconception health for both. So I have patients that say to me, and the male patient will say, well, I got someone pregnant when I was 18, or I got someone pregnant when, when I was 21, so it's definitely not me. Well, being one of my fertility patients isn't about finding blame. It's about diagnosis before treatment, looking at everything. No woman wants to go through fertility hormones, tests, shots, ultrasounds, to only find out after very expensive treatments that there could have been something different that we could have done about the sperm. The time to find out is early on. So don't wait to get your sperm health tested. Go ahead and get it checked ahead of time. Do it now and don't be afraid because knowledge is power and there are things that you can do to improve sperm health. Unlike eggs, Eggs don't regenerate every two to three months, but sperm cells do. So if you've been sitting in the hot tub, sauna, steam room, or even getting a bubble bath on, you may want to get those balls out of the hot water, I did just say that, and get them nice and cool and prepared for a healthy pregnancy. So the next fertility myth, number three, is getting pregnant and delivering your first baby means baby number two is going to be just as easy. I hear this myth all the time. People sharing with me stories that they got pregnant very easily on their honeymoon. And so they just thought that two to three or four or five or six years later, they just try again and they should get pregnant that easily. But that's a fertility myth. It's a huge one that we should all stop believing. So here's what I advocate. I advocate for women getting their levels checked. Men, get your sperm checked. It's super easy to do. A blood test like FSH estradiol done on cycle day number three, an AMH test done around the same time or any time in the cycle can guide you. When you've brought home baby number one at your postpartum visit, ask for a fertility screening, a level check. It's as simple as that. And then 
plan your, first, your future family. Ask yourself, how old am I right now? How many kids do I want? And is there something that I should be doing differently regarding fertility preservation to give me a chance to have the family size that I want? I see a lot of patients who are over 40 when they're coming to see me for their first baby. I can promise you that 100% of them wish they had frozen their eggs earlier or someone had taught them about ovarian aging. So that's why I'm here to just talk about this, to make it something easy to learn about. And if you have any questions, you can always send me an email and I'm happy to guide you. I'm happy to guide you to a fertility doctor close to you as well. So the next myth, and this is a funny one, is that you can control the gender of your baby. I get emails all the time from people asking me, I want a boy, can you help me? Or I want a girl because we have three boys, can you help me? So I don't know if you knew this, but during sex, if you hold your right nostril and sniff out of your left, did you know that you could have a boy? And likewise, if you pulled on your right ear and then did a headstand, you could have a girl, all while having sex. No, those things are totally not true. They are complete myths and I've heard them all. And like I told you at the beginning, I am a fertility myth buster and I tell people all day long that they should stop believing things just like this. So when it comes to gender and IVF, don't travel outside the country for all the myths that you know people are trying to get you to believe. But indeed, the only way to do that is through IVF with PGS. Every egg cell is an X, every sperm cell is an X or a Y. So if you want a girl, tell your male partner to wear pink to the egg retrieval. No, that's not the way either. Basically, it's a 50-50 chance. It's as simple as that. And then once you go through the IVF cycle, your fertility doctor will present the embryology report to you and then show you which embryo is male, which embryo is female. And if you have the ability to choose, then certainly you can pick the embryo that you want. That's how I do it in my office. So there's no headstands, no right nostril or left nostril sniffing or pulling on your right ear to have the gender of your choice. But I will celebrate with you. I will wear pink lipstick if you want a girl or blue if you want a boy. I won't. Okay, so number five is that unexplained infertility is actually a thing. So I want people to realize that you can actually have a fertility diagnosis. And that's why I put up this slide about the Tushy method. So these are the five simple fertility screening tests that you could do. Get your tubes checked, do an ultrasound, make sure there aren't any fibroids, polyps, or anything obstructing the way. Do a semen analysis, check your hormones, and look at your genetics. I assure you that if you get your tushy checked, if you do it and have it looked at by a fertility doctor like me, they'll be able to present the story. They'll be able to take all the puzzle pieces and give you an accurate diagnosis so that they can guide you as to what treatments you should be considering. I have patients who come to me who are, let's say, 42 years old, and they say something like, I just don't understand why I'm not getting pregnant. I've been told that it's unexplained. Well, I think that's unfair. A 42-year-old woman should know that each egg has a 10% or less chance of being genetically viable. And that's why it's hard to get pregnant. It's just because you're a human being. It's called human biology. There's nothing wrong with you. So understanding the fertility facts, your biology, and getting those fertility myth busters, fertility, that's what I am, a fertility myth buster, getting those fertility myths busted is the key to you understanding more about yourself and what you should be doing moving forward. So the sixth fertility myth I want you to stop believing is that getting pregnant should be easy. Yeah, I know, I know. Your friends just look at each other. They just have a shot of tequila and they're getting pregnant. Or, you know, all your friends who smoke and drink and do crack. I know your friends don't cook, do crack, but you know what I'm saying. They're all getting pregnant. But the reality is they really aren't. If you talk to most of your friends, if you really talk to them, they're not getting pregnant every single time they ovulate. I call that fertility bragging. So fertility braggers, just let them brag. But the majority of human beings, it actually takes them at least six months to get pregnant. And for some people, it can take up to a year. Having miscarriages is normal. Biochemical pregnancies is part of the human experience, unfortunately. I wish there was a way to cure things like miscarriage, ovarian aging, but there isn't. So the most important thing for you to do is understand your fertility, get an accurate picture of what's going on, and learn about what you can do to give yourself the best ch chance of pregnancy at home. And if you need help, go to someone who believes in your fertility and has a positive outlook on things. So the seventh myth, the seventh myth that you should stop believing is that your fertility is just like your mom's. 
So we have these things called genes, right? And we inherit them from both our moms and our dads. So you can ask your mom, hey, when did you stop having your periods? Period. But you can't ask your dad that, right? Your dad wouldn't know because, you know, unless things change, biologically speaking, men still don't get periods and men don't go through menopause and men cannot get pregnant. So while you might have something similar with your mom, just because she had pregnancy easily at, let's say, 19, then 22, and 24, that doesn't mean the same thing for you at, let's say, 36, 39, and 42. So it's just important to know that there are tests that you can do that look at reproductive genes so that you can understand the full picture about yourself and then you can see what makes sense for you to do. But don't rely on the fact that your mom had three pregnancies easily in her early 20s and have that be a reflection of what is to come for you if you delay and have kids basically when everyone else is having kids, especially in the Bay Area, in their 30s. So get your fertility levels checked and don't make assumptions and think that things are skin deep like your fertility. It doesn't matter how amazing you look on the outside. While it's nice to be super fit and healthy, that doesn't necessarily mean much about your egg health on the inside. So get your levels checked. So the eighth fertility myth that I bust every single day is that egg freezing is insurance. So this is the thing. People think that when your house burns down, or we know this to be a fact, when your house burns down, if you have fire insurance, of course you're going to have your house rebuilt, right? Because you have insurance. But egg freezing is not really insurance. It's a chance for pregnancy because if you remember, we're all human beings. And each egg has a chance, for uh, a chance to turn into a viable pregnancy in the future. And there's so much else that goes into having a healthy pregnancy, like sperm health, the health of the uterus, and the ability of an embryo to implant. So... I want to make sure that there's a gener generation of women out there that aren't going to be disappointed by maybe some claims that they read online about other women talking in articles, for example, in major magazines and newspapers that egg freezing is a form of insurance because it just isn't. It's a chance for future pregnancy and might be a higher chance when, let's say, you're 42 and you froze eggs when you're 35. Well, maybe you'll give yourself a higher chance, but nothing is 100%. So if you want to freeze your eggs, make sure trying to make a joke here, not to put all your eggs in one basket, and you can't have everything, at least not, not all at once. I hope that, the, I wish there, there was such a thing. So the ninth and last fertility myth that I want people to stop believing is you can't have a healthy pregnancy without having regular menstrual cycles. So why is that important? Well, it's important because many women, let's say, for example, over the age of 45, well, they stop having regular cycles because their ovaries aren't releasing an egg every month. Well, you actually don't even need ovaries to have a pregnancy. You need a uterus. And so fertility doctors like me, we give patients hormones, estrogen, and then progesterone to mimic ovulation and then pregnancy so that women who don't have ovaries or don't have regular cycles because they've run out of eggs can still have healthy pregnancies. And if you have irregular cycles, it could also be a sign of a condition called PCOS or hypothalamic amenorrhea. So get checked so that you can go ahead and figure out what's going on and why this thing, these things are happening so that you can do the appropriate treatment so that you can reach your family size goals. So I hope that my fertility myth busting was helpful tonight. So if you hear these myths being told at so social gatherings, you know, about standing on your head or wearing pink to have a girl, you'll now know that those things are just not true. Thanks for joining me tonight. Be sure to go to my YouTube channel, Egg Whisper Show, to watch previous shows. You can look at my online blog, dramy.org, as well as my Medium account for all the helpful articles, tips and fertility tricks by me, your local San Francisco fertility doctor. Have a great night. Thanks, you guys. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadeh, and you have yet another success story just launched by.